I have a little story for you today, but before we do that, let me quote three of our brothers. First of all, the Apostle Paul. In writing to the Thessalonian believers in their first letter, in his first letter to them, he said, I know your patience of hope. But in his second letter, 2 Thessalonians 3, 5, this is his prayer for them. Now may the Lord direct your hearts into the love of God and into the patience of Christ. Beautiful, isn't it? The patience of Christ. He has been waiting over 2,000 years to bring his bride home to enter into his kingdom, to establish his rule, to have Israel bow at his feet and recognize his messiahship, to cast out the old devil. All these centuries he's been waiting. How long have you been waiting? (laughs) And so Paul says, I'm praying for you that you'll enter into this. Now he, he notices that they do have patience, but he says you need more. And we need more. We live in a very impatient society, a very impatient world. Split seconds, you know, time is money. Time is the new wealth and all this sort of talk. And so we feel the pressure. And the Lord wants us to be marked by patience. And then our brother James, you know, he has some very uh, antiseptic words for us. But This is a beautiful statement. He uses an illustration, as James is wont to do, and he says, let patience have her perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. You wouldn't think of James maybe as a patient man, (laughs) but, but clearly he sees the benefit of it. But he goes on to say in chapter 5, verse 7, therefore be patient, brethren, until the coming of the Lord. See how the farmer waits for the precious fruit of the earth, waiting patiently for it until he receives the early and latter rains, right? Farmers need to be patient. They don't put in uh, strawberries in the morning and, and get the strawberries for their breakfast tomorrow. There's a patience that's required in sowing and reaping. And so he says, You will reap if you faint not. Don't give it up. Keep at it because God is going to vindicate his word. And then our brother John on the Isle of Patmos, he says, I, John, both your brother and companion in the tribulation and kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ. The tribulation, yeah, we we have hard times. It's getting harder all the time. Some of our brothers and sisters in other parts of the world have been through this a lot more than we have. But it's it's not easy. We need uh, to have that, that sense that tribulation works patience. It's resulting in something. It's producing the evidence that we're genuine and that we do have a solid hope beyond this world. We're not counting on this world. In this world, we can afford to be disappointed because this isn't it. And we're waiting for the real thing. The tribulation and kingdom, right? We're busy. It's not just we're sitting around moaning and twiddling our thumbs and watching the evening news. <laughs> we're busy. We're preaching a message concerning the coming king and patience sticking it out, hanging in there, keeping at it. Don't give up. All right. Now, here's my little story. Many years ago, I was invited to attend the Christian Writer School put on by Decision Magazine, the Billy Graham Magazine, and uh, Roger Palms at that time was the editor. And uh, I was invited to go to this series of seminars and lectures on Christian writing. Now, one of the speakers at that time noticed Margaret Clarkson in the audience. And so he lauded her to the skies and he highly expressed his high appreciation for 
what was considered the great missionary hymn of the 20th century, which she penned, So send I you, to labor unrewarded, to serve unpaid, unloved, unsought, unknown, to bear rebuke, to suffer scorn and scoffing, so send I you to toil for me alone. And so it goes. I never liked it. It was so discouraging to me. And I said, wait a minute, this isn't true. We don't labor unrewarded. We have to wait a bit. We're, we're not unpaid. I mean, the benefits are out of this world. We're not unloved. The greatest heart in the universe loves us. And people come to love us as we share the gospel with them. Not everyone, but some people thank God that we came their way. And God's people love us. So it's not that we're unloved unsought, unknown. Yes, well, as unknown and yet well-known, says Paul. We're who's who in heaven. We're who's he down here, but we're who's who in heaven. We're prayed for by the Lord Jesus. We're on his prayer list. And so all the way down, you know, to toil for me alone. Well, we may be alone in a sense, but the Spirit of God is within us, and Christ is for us, and the Father is standing by, pouring out blessings upon us, and so on. So I never really liked the poem. And, um, and to my amazement, Margaret Clarkson stood up. She's quite a tall, dignified woman. She was a school teacher. And she stood up and she said, excuse me, I wish you hadn't said that. <laughs> she said, I wrote that when I was a lonely, single, young school teacher in a little isolated community in Northern Ontario. And I was feeling very down. She said, it really isn't true, you know. And she started going through the poem, deconstructing everything she had written. And then she concluded with these words, especially the last stanza is not true, which says, so send I you to taste of Calvary. She said, we don't taste of Calvary. He drank the cup to the dregs. And because he went to Calvary, I don't have to go through that. Oh, I just, in my heart, I, I gave her a standing ovation. <laughs> Three cheers for Margaret Clarkson. You know, there's no such a thing as a repentant book. That's why I waited till I was 70. Hopefully I'd learned a thing or two before I started publishing books. Because once it's out there, it's hard to get back. But here was a woman with the courage to acknowledge what? We need patience. It's not that we're unloved. It's not that we're unpaid. It's not that we're unrewarded. It's just that right now, we're in the day of Christ's rejection. We're, we're behind enemy lines. We're not home yet. And like a farmer, we sow, we water, we wait. And someday, if we faint not, we will reap. So Christian, you may be very discouraged and feeling like I am serving alone. Nobody else is pulling their weight. Well, remember what the Christians spoke about in the book of Acts the Lord working with them. The Lord is my helper. Write that over your desk. Put that in the front of your Bible. When you feel like you're out there alone, the Lord is standing by a very present help. Well, God help us not to read things with the eyes in our head, but the eyes of our heart. And lay hold of this glorious truth. We need the patience of Christ. He's waited 2,000 plus years. Surely you can wait a few more years until at last you're gathered home and we see the results that the Holy Spirit has brought in, that Christ has brought in, that the Father has brought in. The lavish display of the grace of God manifested will be overwhelmed and never once will it come to our mind that we were unrewarded, or unpaid, or unloved, or unknown.